Hi guys, I'm just going to do a very quick tutorial on 3D roses just in time for Valentine's Day. So I've already created a pink layer of acrylic with tie-dye pink from NSI um, as my nails completely finished, glaze and go on top and now I'm doing my 3D work on top. I'm using the Crystal Nails Mini 3D brush and I'm using the tie-dye pink, the NSI tie-dye pink, but I'm also just ever so slightly dipping my tie-dye pink bead into my pure white acrylic, just so that the top rim of the petals has an ever so slight white or lighter um, shade to it, so that the 3D flowers stand out against the tie-dye pink nail. So the key to doing 3D uh, roses, and any sort of 3D really, is picking up a nice small bead, soaking the liquid out of the back of the bead before you place that bead onto the nail. And then the best thing is patience. If I start working that bead straight away while it's still quite um, wet and polymerizing, then you're not gonna get nice crisp petals. So just give it a few seconds just for that bead to start setting before you start pressing it with your brush. Now you don't actually use the point of your brush to press, you use the belly of the brush because that's the stronger part of the brush. So you're going to cut your bead and spread it out with the point of your brush but then use more the belly of the brush to actually press it out. And that way you'll get a nice crisp petal rather than um, sort of stabbing into it and breaking the petal up. So the idea with this design is to cover the whole entire nail in 3D but in the same colour that you've done the actual nail in. But like I say, I am just tipping my bead just with a tiny bit of pure white just so it stands out a little bit. And it looks really nice. It looks like one of those dresses that's like covered in flowers. It's really pretty. So you'll see that I'm sort of working different areas at a time. I don't just stick to one area. I'll put my beads in different parts of my flowers and then I know I've got time in between to come back and then start moulding them while that bead is starting to polymerize a little bit. So I can go back and work my insides um, of my flowers which I do at a 90 degree angle and I do use the point of the brush for the insides of the flowers but as for the outside yes you do want to be more a flatter angle. So I've already done two roses I'm just doing my uh, my third and my fourth but like I say really sort of almost cramming it onto that nail so that it looks like a really busy full finger of 3D. You would only do this on sort of two nails on your signature nails normally. You wouldn't do it on all ten because that would just take you too long. But the key is definitely patience. If you try and work with that bead too early then you'll not get any crispness. You end up with quite bubble looking flowers and you don't. You want your roses to be nice and crisp petals. So when you're first making that petal, once you've placed your bead down and you've given it that little bit of time to settle, just use your point of your brush to open up that bead so it's a bit more like a croissant shape and then you can start to press out. When you are pressing out, make sure that the point of the brush always goes to the centre of your flower so it doesn't go outside of the flower, it goes to the centre of your flower. And the reason that I use pure white instead of radiant white is it's a higher pigment powder so you'll get a much crisper finish. Radiant white is designed to actually make extensions with so it's going to bounce back when you actually place it onto the nail whereas pure white is actually more of a competition powder so it's a higher pigment powder and you'll get a crisper uh, finish on your flowers. You could use um, winning white or rebalanced white whichever one you've got. They um, they work really well as, as that as well. So you can see now I'm nearly finished. I've just got some little gaps in between. So all I'm going to do is just add a few extra little petals or little circles just to fill those gaps in so that you look like you've got a really full nail, really busy 3D nail. And there's no need to top coat on top of this once it's... Uh, once you finish your 3D you are done, you don't need to add anything else to it, just a little bit of cuticle oil around that client's nail. But I'm just making sure that I've got every little space filled in now so that this nail looks nice and full. And again, just for them extra beads, make sure that you're using your point of your brush at a 90 degree angle 
just to finish that off. There we go.